Alright, hello biology, this is Mr. B here, and we are getting ready to start a new chapter, and then we're actually not going in order from the book, we're on chapter 7, and we are going to study cells in this chapter. So, the title of this section was Life is Cellular. So, we talked about cells being the smallest functional unit of life in our last, uh, in our last chapter, so we're going to get a little more in-depth with them now. So, the first step is, how did we discover these cells? So, uh, because there were no instruments to make cells visible, the existence of cells was unknown for most of human history. So we talked about spontaneous generation and things like that. So we did not know what made us up. We had no idea. So most of it was just a lack of technology. So the uh, invention of the microscope kind of changed that whole perspective for us. We look, can look at things in a whole new way with the microscope. So the first person to use that microscope to look at the cells was a guy by the name of Robert Hooke. So, Robert Hooke, that is an important person to remember right there. And he used an early compound microscope to look at a thin slice of cork, a plant material. So you guys all know that the, um, what they used to hold bottles in, or like a bottle cap of champagne or something like that, is made out of cork. So he looked at a cork cell underneath, or he looked at a thing of cork underneath a microscope. So what he thought, he looked like, he thought that the cork looked like, looked like thousands of tiny empty chambers. So calling these chambers, or looking at these chambers, he called them cells, like a prison cell or something like that. So that's where the term cell came from. The first person that looked at it thought that they looked like a chamber or, again, maybe a prison cell. And then, again, you guys know the cells are the basic units of life. So here is what a cork cell would look like. As you can see, there's a bunch of open spaces that would be those chambers that he was talking about. So then some other discoveries at the time, a guy by the name of Anton von Leeuwenhoek, he used a single lens microscope to observe pond water and, of, and other things. And then this microscope revealed the world of tiny living organisms. We mentioned him briefly at one time, but he's another one that looked at a microscope and saw some, <clears throat> and saw a bunch of tiny li living things. And then uh, after these people made some discoveries, we had a couple other people come along that helped make something what's called the cell theory. So the scientists that were important in making the cell theory were Matthias Schleiden, and he was the first one that looked at plants and saw that they were made of cells. Then in 1839, a guy by the name of Theodore Schwann stated that all animals were made out of cells. Now the way I remember that Schwann uh, was the one that studied animals was Schwann kind of sounds like the animal a swan and a swan is an animal so Theodore Schwann was the one that said that animals were made out of cell in 1855 Rudolf Virchow concluded that new cells were created only from division of existing cells so that's one of those characteristics of life that we talked about being able to reproduce is a characteristic of life and by Virchow is the guy that came up with that and all of these discoveries together led to the cell theory and the cell theory states all living things are composed of cells. You already knew that. Cells are the basic unit of structure and function in living things. You guys already knew that as well. And then new cells are produced from existing cells. So again, I think we all, we've talked about all these things being a characteristic of life. So the cell theory, I try to remember these three points. All living things are composed of cells. Cells are the basic units of structure and function in living things. And new cells are produced from existing cells. So after they came up with the cell theory, um, they kind of wanted to explore the cell. So our new technologies that we have now allow us to study the structure and movement of the living cells in great detail. So we talked about the electron microscopes and the more advanced technology that we have. It gives us a big advantage over the scientists of the past. So that is what we're doing to now today. We're using a lot of new technologies to find out even more about the cells. So cells in general after we discovered them, and again, as we've uh, kind of advanced our technology, we found out a lot more about them. So they, we found out that they come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and we've also dis discovered that they're surrounded by a barrier called the cell membrane. We talked about that in our introduction activity that we did. So the cell membrane, every single cell will have one of those. And another characteristic of all cells is that they have to contain DNA. So no matter what, <clears throat> a cell, if you want to be a cell, you have to have DNA you have to have a cell membrane and those are pretty much the two only two characteristics that are shared amongst all cells and that is because we have categories of cells and so they're classified into two categories depending on whether or not they contain a nucleus again nucleus we talked about that that's the brain of the cell and the nucleus has a large membrane enclosed structure that contains the cell's genetic material in the form of DNA and it controls many of the cell's activities so nucleus is kind of at the center of things and would be considered the brain so when we look at that we have two <clears throat> 
we have two categories. We have eukaryotes, they're the cells that do have a nucleus, or the single form of that is nuclei, or the, I'm sorry, the plural form of that is nuclei. And then uh, the prokaryotes are the other type, and those are cells that do not contain nuclei. So those are our two types of cells. Eukaryotes have a nucleus, prokaryotes do not have a nucleus. And so then we're going to look at some of the characteristics of each one of these types of cells. So we're going to start with prokaryotes. So prokaryotic cells have genetic material that is not contained in a nucleus. And the big word there, it is not. So that their genetic material is kind of just going to be floating around in some random place. And then prokaryotes do not have membrane-bound organelles. We're going to talk about more what an organelle is. It's just kind of means a small organ. It's just a part of a cell. And then prokaryotic cells are generally smaller and simpler than eukaryotic cells. So again, smaller, simpler are the two words you keep in mind there. And an example is bacteria are prokaryotes. So that is our prokaryotic cells. We will go over, maybe make a little graphic organizer or something like that to keep those straight. So eukaryotes. So eukaryotic cells contain a nucleus in which their genetic material is separated from the rest of the cell. So that's a big characteristic of them. They have a nucleus in which their genetic material is separated from the rest of the cell. And then some more um, kind of going against everything that the prokaryotes have. So here are the characteristics of the eukaryotes. So eukaryotic cells are generally larger and more complex than prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells generally contain dozens of structures and internal membranes. Again, those would be those organelles that I mentioned earlier, because we have organs. We talk about an organ like our stomach. The organelles are going to be just parts, like many organs that help the cell function. Then many eukaryotic cells are highly specialized, which means they have a very specific job and have evolved to be pretty complex. And so then examples, plants, animals, fungi, which are mushroom, and pro are mushrooms, and protists are all going to be eukaryotes. Okay, the bell just went off, so I'll redo that. Many eukaryotic cells are highly specialized, and they would be plants, animals, fungi, protists, and eukaryotes, are all eukaryotes. And that is all we have for today, so let me know if you have any questions.